Sir William Cash. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, in a nutshell, we must be able to threaten tech bosses with jail. There is precedence for this. Jail sentences for senior managers in a great range of UK legislation are commonplace for breaches of duties. That is absolutely and completely clear. And as a shadow attorney, former shadow attorney general, I know exactly what the law is on this subject. I can say this. The protection of our children and grandchildren from predatory platforms for financial gain on the internet, which is endemic throughout the world and in the UK, inducing suicide, self-harm and sexual abuse is an assault on the mind of our young children and on those who are affected by it and the families who are affected by it, like Ian Russell. Ian Russell has shown great courage in coming out with his tragedy of his small child, 14 years old, committed suicide as a result of the coroner made clear of these activities. It is unthinkable that we will not deal with it. And we are dealing with it now, and I thank the Secretary of State and I thank the Minister for responding with constructive dialogue in a very short space of time since we really got to grips with this. And can I say this? The written ministerial statement is absolutely crystal clear. It says, where senior managers or those purporting to act in that capacity have consented or connived in ignoring enforceable requirements, risking a serious harm to children, the criminal penalties, including imprisonment and fines, will be commenced with the similar offences. And if you make a comparison, as the right honourable lady for Barking and, uh, uh, for Barking and Dagenham made clear, there are financial penalties in the financial services. That is international as well. And there is also the construction industry, as my right honourable friend, my honourable friend, the member for Penniston Stockbridge has said. The fact is that these are already on our statute book. So I don't care what the European Union is doing in its legislation. And I'm glad to know that the Irish legislation which has been passed and is an act, has been through all these different uh, permutations and examinations, and they've come up with something which also includes similar severe penalties. It can be done, but this is our legislation in this House, and we will do it the way we want to do it, to protect our children and our families. And I'm just about fed up of listening to all the mealy-mouthed remarks coming from those who say, we can't do it, it's not quite appropriate. I'd say to hell with that. We're talking about our children, and I'll say this too. When it comes to the question of past record, I just mentioned this. In 1977-78, a great friend of mine, Cyril Townsend, the member for Bexley Heath, brought forward the first Protection of Children Bill, and he asked me to help him, and I did. And we got it through. It was incredibly, it was incredibly difficult at the time. You have no idea, Mr. Deputy Speaker, how much resistance was put up by certain members of this House in getting it through, including ministers. And I can tell you, it was Jim Callaghan. I spoke to him because I was here. I've been here so long, and I, be, he, I was here when Jim Callaghan was in the House after he'd been Prime Minister. And I said, "How did you give it so much time so that we could get the bill through?" Oh, he said, "It's very simple." He said. I was sitting in bed with my wife in, the, uh, in number 10 in the flat upstairs, and she wasn't talking to me. And I said, what's wrong, darling? And she, he said, she had re replied to him, if you don't get that protection of children bill through, I won't speak to you for six months. <laughs> and it went through. So there you go. So there's a message there for all secretaries of state and, and even for prime ministers. I did raise this with the prime minister in December on the question of uh, on the liaison committee. I, I, I invited him to consider it, and I'm so glad that we've come to this after a very constructive discussion and dialogue. It needed it. It isn't a matter of chariots of fire. It's a question of chariots on fire, because we've done all this in three weeks. And I can only say that I'm extremely grateful for the, hunt, for the 51 MPs who stood firm, because we know the realities of this House, and I have to say it, having been involved in one or two, shall we say, discussions in the past, <laughs> that it's only when you've got the numbers that the, that the results start to come, as a rule. But I want to pay tribute to, them, to the Ministers for their constructive dialogue, and I think the Irish example will provide a model, but it will be our legislation 
It will be modelled on some of the things that they have already enacted, but it's not just simply a matter of their legislation being transformed into ours. It will be our legislation. And in the European Parliament, in, in, in the European Parliament, I know, I just want to say this. <laughs> Miriam Cates. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I also write to speak to the new clause too, which uh, seeks to introduce senior manager criminal liability to the online safety bill. But as my honourable friend has, has so clearly set out, we won't be pushing it to the vote as a result of the very welcome commitments that have been made by the Minister to introducing a similar amendment in the other place. Mr Deputy Speaker, protecting children is not just the role of parents, but the responsibility of the whole of society, including our institutions and businesses who wish to trade here. And that is the primary aim of this bill, which I wholeheartedly support, to keep children safe online from horrendous harms, many of which unspeakably have been uh, mentioned by my right hon. Friend, the Member for Northamptonshire. We look back in horror at children being forced to work down mines or neglected in Victorian orphanages, but I believe we'll look back with similar outrage at online harms. What greater violation could there be of childhood than to entice a child to collaborate in their own sexual abuse in the privacy and supposed safety of their own bedroom? And yet this is one of the many crimes that is occurring on industrial scale every day. Past horrors, like children down mines, were tackled by robust legislation, and the online safety bill must continue our Parliament's proud tradition of taking on vested interests to defend the welfare of children. The online safety bill must succeed in its mission, but in its present form, I don't believe it has sufficient teeth to drive the determination that is needed in tech boardrooms to tackle the systemic issues, the malevolent algorithms that drive this sickening content to our children. There is no doubt the potential fines in the bill are significant, but many of these companies have deep pockets and the only criminal sanctions are for failure to share data with Ofcom. And the inquest following the tragic death of Molly, Molly Russell was an example of that. No one could be held personally responsible for what happens to Molly. And I want to pay tribute to Ian Russell, Molly's father, whose courage in the face of such personal tragedy has made such an enormous difference in bringing to light the extent of online harms. Only personal criminal liability will drive proactive change, and we've seen this in other areas such as the financial services industry and the construction industry. So I'm absolutely delighted that the government has recognised the necessity of senior manager liabilities after much campaigning across the House uh, for tech bosses and committed to introducing it uh, in the other place. And I want to thank the Secretary of State and her team for the very constructive, very positive way uh, that they have engaged with supporters. I well. certainly will. Uh, would she not also like to say the NSPCC have been absolutely magnificent in supporting us? I was coming on to that. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, so the advantage of doing this in the other place uh, is that we can widen the scope to all child safety, well, all appropriate child safety duties beyond just Section 11 and perhaps tackle pornography and child sexual abuse material as well. And we will, I believe, now have a groundbreaking bill that will hold to account powerful executives who knowingly allow our children to be harmed. And there are those who say, and we heard some yesterday, not least the tech companies, that we should not be seeking to criminalise tech directors. There are those who worry that this will reduce tech investment, but that hasn't happened in Ireland. There are those that say this senior manager liability amendment will put a great burden on tech companies to comply, to which I say, great. And there are those who are worried that this will set an international precedent, to which I say, even better, because nothing should cause greater outrage in our society than the harming of innocent children. And in a just society, founded on the rule of law, those who harm children or allow children to be harmed should expect to be punished by the law. And this is what this amendment seeks to do, and I look forward to working with my right honourable friend and others to bring forward a suitable amendment in the other place. And I do want to offer my sincere thanks to the NSPCC, especially Rich Collard, and to the outstanding Charles Hymas of The Telegraph, who have so effectively supported this campaign. And I also want to pay tribute to my honourable friend, the member of Stoke, for Stone, without whose determination, yeah. knowledge and experience, yeah. it would not have been possible to achieve this change. Uh, my honourable friend has been known as Mr Brexit, but as he said, even before he was Mr Brexit, he was Mr Child Protection, being involved, as he said, with the Protection of Children Act uh, in 1978. And it's certainly advantageous in negotiations to work with someone who knows vastly more about legislation than pretty much anyone else involved. And, and he sat through um, the debate in December when we were discussing the Right Honourable Ladies Amendment, and we sat there at the back on those benches while the vote was taking place, and he said, 
I think we can do this. And he spent the next week in the public bill office and most of his recess buried in legislation. So I do want to pay tribute for his outstanding work. So, Mr. Mr. Speaker, once, Mr. Deputy Speaker, once again, I do thank the Secretary of State uh, for her commitment to this. Uh, and I do think this will continue our Parliament's proud history of protecting children. Well said. Yeah. Yeah.